Singing News Radio, the voice of Southern Gospel Music. It's Greg Goodman, and we have Scott Enman of Triumph and Quartet with us today. How you doing, Scott? Good. How you doing? I'm doing great. You guys got a new project on the way out? We do. We're very excited. I know, I know that sounds cliche, but we are very excited. Uh, every, each album that comes by, um, just feel like um, our outlook and our, our focus is more focused. <laughs> You just get more focused. I think so. I think so. I think so. As a group, I think each album you learn maybe some things that you wish you'd have done differently. And I feel like this album is more zoned in on some things that we wanted to maybe get right this time. Well, I was going to ask you. You know, with the success of the last project, you know, Mm -hmm. Chainbreaker, Thankful, So Thankful, those are some massive songs. Does that put you in a position where you start thinking, how do we top this, or do you just Try to hold on to the momentum, or where do you go with that process when you have a project that does that well? Well, I definitely. I mean, I definitely think the human side of you goes, "Oh my goodness, you know, what can we do uh, to keep this going?" And um, I think we've done it with yes. I think it's different than the Thankful album, mm-hmm. but yet it has that. Um, you know, sometimes people don't know exactly what we're going to do next, <laughs> and sometimes we don't either. Yeah, but um, I feel like we didn't record the same album twice. Um, which I, I I love that, and um, so I'm excited what people will think. I'm excited for people to hear yes, and I think they're going to enjoy it. So it'll be some new fresh stuff. Very. You uh, like I said, we don't like to record the same song twice. Mm. So I feel like we uh, said some new things. Um, you'll hear some new things, and uh, but it's triumphant. Same guys. Yeah, I got. It. Uh, so I was talking with Kenna Turner West the other day, and she was giving me almost a minute by minute play by play of how even me came together, how the words just kind of came to her mind, and then she shared them with the co-writer, and he said, "Oh yeah," and then we do this and this. What was uh, the group's thought when uh, they brought this song to you? Long story short, um, this is probably the best story of the album. Um, we were done picking songs. Uh, we we've been listening for a year. I'd been co-writing for a year. Um, we were just kind of narrowed it down to 12, and we're going to try to narrow it down from that to 11, 10 or 11. She called and said, Scotty, uh, are you still looking for songs? I said, no, we're not. We're done. You know, we're, we're burnt. We're, we're done. And she said, well, well, if you were going to look, what would you need? <laughs> you know, Ken. I can hear Ken yeah, saying that. But, but, but I said, well, um, something we can't turn down. And she sent even me. And it's our first single, and honestly, um, one of the strongest songs we've ever recorded in 17 years. And uh, the feedback so far has been amazing, and we're, we are excited to see what this song will do and uh, how many people it will reach. I think it's going to be interesting to see some of the stories that uh, you're going to hear mm-hmm. as you go out to concerts and people saying, but even me, mm-hmm. you know, he could love even me with, with this circumstance. Yeah, or with, this all my fail- with all my failures, all my shame, uh, yeah. if I was the only one, he would have died for me. And so that's, sometimes we hear that verse, we, we hear the world, you mm-hmm. know, we're like, well, we're just a small speck in the world, but he would have died for even me. Right. So it's, it's a, it's a strong song and I'm, I'm, I believe it was, um, God orchestrated that, uh, that phone call from her to us about, are you still looking for a song? And uh, so she sent it our way, and I'm glad that we weren't too closed-minded. To s- we all looked at each other and went, "Well, I guess we have another song on the album." <laughs> so we're just we're just it's the first single out on the new album, and um, I can't think of a better one. That is the first single off their new project called "Yes." What is the uh, release date for the project? We, March the fifteenth. March the fifteenth. Mm-hmm. Okay, very cool. So that was the last song. That came to you, which you were not expecting to put on the project, and yet it's the first release to radio. Man, mm. that tells me that uh, there might be some really good songs on here. <laughs> we th- we think so. I mean, we uh, it was the most songs we had at the end of the listening time. Normally, you know, you're you have like six you're really excited about, and then you're just trying to find some great songs to finish the record out but this mm-hmm. one we had like 14 and we couldn't narrow it down and we went back and forth like well but we really need to do this one but well this one so we had a hard time getting it down to even 11 um so when even me came along it kind of threw a wrinkle in it but it was a great wrinkle um because it like i said it, it's a strong song but uh we feel like we have 11 great songs 
and they all say something different. They all say something maybe we haven't said in an album or two. We're just, again. I I would say this lyric cuts to the quick with uh, getting down to the salvation message and, and how it's available for absolutely anyone. Well, yes. I mean, you know, probably the number one verse of Scripture is John three sixteen. For mm-hmm. God so loved the world. You know, even uh, non believers or you know know that. know that verse. But if you really think about that verse um, and the weight it has, and when you bring it to a personal level, um, sometimes we need to re- need to be reminded that mm-hmm. uh, He loves us and He died for us. Absolutely. Scott Inman with Triumph and Quartet is with us. The new project is Yes, available March 15th, and we'll be listening to some more songs off of that coming up right here on Singing News Radio. This hour is paid for and furnished by Triumphant Quartet and Stowtown Records. And, you know, we, we think about some of the uh, more recent hits like Chain Breaker and Thankful. Mm-hmm. You, you guys are known for happy songs just like that one. Well, you know, me and Lee were right, and I was like, Lee, I had this syncopation of lyrics. You know, thankful, so thankful. We co-wrote that one as well, and uh, okay. so we kind of had this thing about trying to fit as many words in as little time <laughs> as possible in a special way. <laughs> but anyway, so this one kind of follows. It kind of think has the same charm as thankful, so thankful, as far as how uh, the words are spit out. But uh, hey, we are all excited about the promise of heaven, and uh, this is a. Uh, mentions a lot of things that that we'll we'll enjoy there and uh, it's a fun live song uh, people really people were already singing it and people were really getting into it cool so so you guys are already singing these out on tour every night uh some of them we're kind of introducing some of them you know just kind of so when the album does release uh we're not they're not new to us anymore yeah, yeah, exactly. You you don't want that to happen. <laughs> well, you know, as we we talked about you guys kind of changing things up from project to project, I'm kind of wondering, do you have a definition of southern gospel today? You, you know, I find that very very hard to pin down mm-hmm. as to uh, what that actually is because it's just such a varied uh sound now. Yeah, you know, I think uh, for I'll, I'll say for Triumphant Quartet, um, we have a lot of different ages in the group. Mm-hmm. I think our music, especially in the last five to six years, mirrors that. I think we're kind of a kaleidoscope of uh, music, uh, musical preferences. And what's funny is you would think, well, he's the young one, so obviously he likes the crazier stuff. Well, that's not the truth. <laughs> Each guy owns every aspect of what somebody thinks Southern gospel is, um, you know, we'll do a chain breaker, then turn around and do amazing God, which to me is, um, straight down the pike Southern gospel. Um, to answer your question, I just think at this point, um, a lot of the, the, um, boundaries that we have, I think are widening because man, people need to hear the message Mm -hmm. and however we can get it to them is the way it needs to happen. Uh, we're seeing a lot of full families, coming to our concerts. I'm talking grandparents down to the grandkid in the same. That's our passion. That's our, awesome. Our passion is making music that the whole family can enjoy. I know mm-hmm. that's not, that's hard to do. Right. But I feel like with each album, we're starting to um, tear down that wall of, well, this is just music for them or right. them or them. We want to make music for the family. Yeah. And so that's kind of a passion we've had in the last four or five years. Because so the churches now are separating services, and, and teach his own on that. You know, um, I'm not here to talk about that, but I think if we can get back to worshiping as a family, uh, when Triumphant's in town, bring your family and, 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 uh, and worship <laughs> with us. Yeah, bring the whole family. Speaking of which, uh, before we go to a break here, how, how can folks go about booking a concert or keeping up with where you guys are going to be, all that kind of good stuff? Uh, we are with the Harper Agency. So um, Ed Harper and Jeff Harper, the Harper Agency, harperagency.com. And we also have triumphantquartet.com there as well. All right, cool deal. Scott Inman is with us from Triumph and Quartet. The new project is called Yes. will release on March 15th, and we'll be listening to and talking about the title track, Coming up, this hour paid for and furnished by Stowtown Records. Is it wrong to say Triumphant Quartet? Do you really want us to just say Triumphant? Does it matter? You know, people are going to call us what they want to. 
Uh, we you know, could be but, called worse, right? Yeah, you know, we yeah we <laughs> we're a triumphant triumphant quartet. Now with kind of the digital age, mm-hmm. uh, you really have to like hone in on what your name is mm-hmm. because everything's so digital, it's so metadata, and you know. Oh, so yeah. so we've been triumphant quartet. We've been triumphant, and we decided to go ahead and just hone in on triumphant quartet. And um, people are gonna people have called us triumphant quartet even when we tried to get them to call us triumphant. Mm-hmm. So. They're still going to call us triumphant if they want to call us triumphant, but that's the that's the main word. As long as they show up at the shows and uh, and buy the product, yeah, right? Triumphant is the, <laughs> our name, and quartet is kind of defines what you are as a group. There you go. So right. so call us anything under that umbrella. There All you right. go. Very cool. The uh, new project is called Yes. It's kind of rare to uh, see a song that just has a one word title. Mm-hmm. Um. And then it becomes the title track. It sounds like we're talking about metadata, which a lot of people may not even know what we're talking about here, yeah. but but digital stuff. Mm-hmm. Uh, so so you actually wrote this in kind of a, a digital way uh, with a guy that I know, Nathan Woodard, who also happens to be a uh, music director at White House First Baptist Church, White House, Tennessee. So so tell us about that. First of all, I love Nathan. Nathan's a good buddy of mine. He's a great guy. Um, yeah, you know, yes um, – I have a little bit of a marketing head uh, going on here, so I, you know, I've not really heard a southern gospel song titled "Yes" nor mm-hmm. a southern gospel album. Um, so I, that, I definitely had some of that in mind, but we wanted to write. I mean, all who call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. So if you ask Him, He will say yes. And so this song is a fun two minutes and thirty something seconds of just salvation. Um, story. Radio and, loves you for that. Two yeah, minutes and thirty seconds. Uh, Thank you. Yes. Yeah, so uh, <laughs> the name, the title, what it's talking about, and the length of the song, I, th- I think it has a chance. Written by Scott Inman and Nathan Woodard. We uh, we talked about that being done in kind of a digital fashion when you guys were writing it, and then we didn't explain <laughs> how that took place. So tell us that. Story. That's my fault. Obviously, um, most songs are written in a room. With two riders, three riders, whatever. I was on the road in uh, South Dakota and um, had a co write set up with Nathan by Skype. And so that song was written. I was walking through a mall with my phone in my hand, earbuds in my ear, uh, a mall in Bismarck, Bismarck, North Dakota. Is that North, North Dakota? North Dakota. Yeah. It was North Dakota. I'm sorry. And um, he was in his home in Nashville, Tennessee. And that song was birthed. So wow. thank goodness for technology. It's amazing what we can get done now, isn't it? Mm-hmm. It really is. And now it's the title track. So, Well, very cool. Triumph of Quartet, yes. Well, why did you guys decide to make that the, the title track? You know, I wish there was some amazing story behind that. And sometimes there is, sometimes there isn't. We were just <laughs> looking at the titles of the songs got to the point where you're talking about what the title of the album can be and we all were like yes yes why not yes yes i mean it's it's <laughs> it's it's not been done before i don't think and it's it's a very positive word true a word that's been used on a daily basis by everyone there you go so. scott inman with triumph of quartet with us the uh, project from those guys called Yes, which uh, is released on March 15th, wherever you buy music. We'll come back and listen to uh, more songs off that project. This hour is paid for and furnished by Stowtown Records. Singing News Radio, the voice of Southern Gospel Music. We are so happy to have Scott Inman in studio with us from Triumph and Quartet. Their new project is called Yes, and the song you are about to hear is called We Believe. Now, some people that uh, listen to that contemporary stuff might be uh, familiar with the song, right? Well, yeah. I mean, this is a song that's sang in many churches. It's an anthem, a uh, Christian anthem. We believe um, group, the Newsboys actually came out with this song a few years back. I think it was a part of some of the movies that came out, you know, the God's Not Dead mm-hmm. and the, uh, things like that. But we just feel like the message... Uh, the shape of the shape of the song, everything fit uh, what we're doing right now and what we're wanting to say, and uh, we thought it would sound in, uh, good with harmonies. Um, so we tried it, and we were 
thrilled with the outcome of it. I would say there has to be something to be learned or taken away from seeing Chainbreaker have the success that it did and, uh, you know, go on to win a Singing News Fan Award for a Song of the Year. Uh, and then you go back into your catalog a little bit with Every Day. So it's it's a good song, theoretically, is a good song and can be repackaged for a different audience to uh, kind of fit the quartet style. You know, it's no different than when people go and grab hymns and you know do their own take of a hymn mm-hmm. or a, a classic Southern gospel song from the 70s or 80s or 90s or whatever, or the 60s. What, what we've done in the last few years is take some of these incredible songs that may be in, a, in another part of the Christian field that we think will... Um, lyrically, melodically, um, mesh with what we're doing. And we've had a couple on this album, actually, uh, We Believe and um, Eye of the Storm. Uh, we just, again, just felt like what they said needed to be said, and they fit. Um, and, you know, you look out in the audience, and any time you can sing a song, and immediately there's a percentage of the people that are like, oh, I know this one, and they're yeah. singing it back to you. That's a good thing. It is, and uh, and it may it, that may be the song that makes them buy the album um, to learn the new songs mm-hmm. that you're wanting them to hear too. So it's, um, we just felt like we picked, uh, we believe in Eye of the Storm. We felt like we picked two songs that um, not only say a lot, but that um, might also hit an audience that may be on the fence with uh, the quartet thing. Sure. Or, and we're kind of just uh, anybody we can bring into the fold. It, again, it goes back <laughs> to that passion of we're wanting the whole family to show up, right? And so we're kind of building some bricks onto that. So. Singing News Radio, the voice of Southern Gospel Music. Scott Inman is with us today, and you uh, just heard the song "What He's Done for Me" off of their new project, which is called "Yes," and uh, the. Featured voice on there, bass vocalist who won the Singing News Fan Award for that same category this past year, Eric Bennett. Eric Bennett is um, in a league of his own, in my opinion. Not only is he a great MC, but he's just a great singer. Happens to sing bass, but uh, he's just a great singer. Um, kind of reminds me of like a Rusty Goodman. Uh, people might remember Rusty Goodman, but um, every night, not every night, actually, it was the only night he ever said it, and that's what that's what struck me. We were uh, he was we we're at Branson at Silver Dollar City at Echo Hollow Amphitheater. And it's a huge amphitheater. It is, and at the end of the night, he said, uh, "Make sure you come over here and talk to us." It was that during the, kind of the altar call service at the end, you know, time, and he said, "Hey, I, I want to share with you, you know, about this about this man who who changed my life." And hey, all I can do is tell you what he's done for me. Right. And I went, "Whoa!" So simple yet so personal, you know. Everybody's got their own story, and all all you can do is tell people what he's done for you. Sure. And so we this is almost like kind of a solo song for Eric. We just kind of help him out in the backgrounds, but it's really a personal song, and uh, he does a great job on it. Very very cool. Well, you guys have been together now for what sixteen years? We're working on seventeen. Right seventeen. Now. Okay. Well, obviously there's been tremendous success, but I'm sure it's been a process to get where you are with the fan awards and the hit songs and the sales and the concerts. What has the Lord shown you personally, Scott, through this 17-year journey with Triumph and Quartet? Well, first of all, I'm grateful for the season that he's allowed us. Um, some seasons last a couple of years, some last 16. Um, sometimes what we um, see as the pinnacle of success um he has a way of showing you that um that's not it it's Mm -hmm. something else and um so he has shown us that there's a greater um in different ways that there's a greater um pinnacle to what we're doing and uh whether it's um feedback on a song that we're like man we just love that song and then you hear why people are loving that song Mm -hmm. like wow that's why we do what we do um and that's why he allows us to to sing, and so um, that's kind of a loaded question. I could probably sit here for an hour and <laughs> and, and give you so many different reasons. Um, 
but he's just he's just shown me that he's faithful through all of the um it's not always been hit songs mm-hmm. um as you say i'm not sure we have hit songs but hit songs <laughs> um you know the people are so kind to with the fan awards and, and we're grateful for that there have been times that we thought um maybe we've seen um our best days mm. and um He's been quick to show us that just hang on, mm-hmm. uh, keep going, be faithful. And there's, um, I feel like in the last couple albums, thankful and yes, he's given us a fresh new outlook on what he has for triumphant um, to do and maybe to say. And I think that's so. Um, it's 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 been a lot of fun. He's 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 making it a lot of fun. So, well, it's awesome to know that these songs are impacting people and hitting them in a real way and speaking to them. And I'm sure you could just tell story after story after story of uh, things that people have told you about that. We're we're, we're saying that people are hurting. Right. Um, we're hurting. Everybody's hurting. People mm-hmm. have things. Families are hurting. Um, everybody's got somebody in their family with you know. That's going through something, and we found that out with Chainbreaker. Um, I think when we recorded it, we knew that it had a message that people needed to hear. We didn't realize to the extent. Um, it's it's we've never had a song that has caused so many emails, so many testimonies, so many, and like I said, everybody can relate to that, and I feel like. We uh, on this new album, we kind of went further with some of that. So awesome! I know we're all looking forward to hearing uh, even more of the songs. You, you know, I was looking as I was doing a little research for our uh, interview. I, I just happened across the definition of triumphant: mm-hmm. having won a battle or contest, victorious, feeling or expressing jubilation after having won a victory or mastered a difficult skill. That says a lot, doesn't it? It does. And, you know, I, a lot of people say so, the best years were the beginning. You know, some people say, you know, in anything, man, those first few years were just, you know, that honeymoon phase, I mm-hmm. guess. And we had some great years with Louise Mandrell. I mean, great years. We're talking integrity quartet days, integrity right? Integrity slash triumphant, yeah, <laughs> with uh, with Louise Mandrell. And just that fun, fresh feeling of a new group and, and the excitement that surrounds it. But I'm telling you, if you were to get all the guys in here one at a time, the last two years um, have been really triumphant. That's <laughs> in, amazing. In, in, in many, in many, 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 many different ways. I'm not talking about one specific thing. Um, we are as in, as in one accord as we've ever been uh, with our, our mission and our what we want to say and our statements. Um not that we ever weren't, right? But I just feel like we um, are in a good place, and I pray that God will continue to uh, bless our efforts. And um, we're just grateful He's allowing this season again. Yeah. It's 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 kind of scary, you know. You're like, my goodness, sixteen years. I mean, mm-hmm. but I think um, He has more for us to say. I think He does, absolutely. Well, thank you so much for being in here today, and uh, we'll tell everybody that this project is on Stowtown Records, Triumphant Quartet, ah, produced by Wayne Hahn. I know that guy. Mm-hmm. Uh, and uh, Gordon Moe. Man, you uh, you obviously uh, had some, some serious thought that was put behind the production of each one of these songs with those gentlemen. I think one of the things we wanted to do on this album was go all out on the production side so we teamed up what we feel like are the two best producers in the genre and any genre for that matter i mean Mm -hmm. these guys go well beyond they stand by themselves um i think what you hear in yes is is a combination of two geniuses working together you know people you know wayne produces gordon Gordon's a producer, but yet Wayne produces him on some of his record, and so they work together all the time. And we were just the recipients of some genius mm-hmm. men. So awesome! All right, the uh, project is called "Yes" from Triumph Quartet, available March fifteenth wherever you buy music. 
uh, Triumphant Quartet, and that is from Stowtown Records. Scott, thank you so much for being here today. Thank you. Appreciate you all.